going on, guys? It's your brother, brother OTG. The OTG's for overtime grind. Hardly seen, but I'm always around. And today, I'm going to show you how to utilize some of these players in your music in Reason 12 and Reason Plus. So we're going to hop right into it. So one of the first things that I've noticed is a lot of people say they don't know how to utilize the players for their music. So we're going to hop right into it. I'm going to show you how to do it. So one of the the secrets that I've learned is this oomph of drums. I really like it. There's a couple ways you could utilize it. The first way we're going to use is with a drum sequencer. So easily, we're going to go to our drum supply, click our X. We're going to just, let's go ahead. That sounded pretty dope. And we drag and drop. We're going to make a kit, a pretty simple kit. We're going to make two kicks. Let's use two plain kicks. Now we go over here, we go back, let's uh, grab a clap. Let's just build a a, a click. Uh, a um, drum kit real quick. Let's go back to drum supply. Let's go back to snares. I hope you guys are realizing, by the way, I do this, that you don't have to have a bunch of sound banks because reason comes with the sounds. Let's grab a couple hi-hats. Use that. Let's find something that's open. I like three hi-hats, three sets of hats. That's my personal movement. And let's add one percussion. We can use that. I probably am not going to like that later, but all right, now... So let's go over here and label. Kick one. Kick two. Clap. Snare. Hat one, hat two, hat three. Percussion. All right, now that we got that, we could just hit play on our player. I like to make my stuff with the click track. And you see we got our basic our basic uh uh step sequencer. So now If we add our snare.
know, that just sounds, it just sounds loud and obnoxious, right? How can we fix that? I'm going to show you. So now when you see this little red spot, that lets you know what you're selecting. So first I'm going to work on the hi-hats right here. You turn down the volume. Okay, now right here you fix the pitch. Okay. That snare, I want it to be a little louder. I want the pitch a little lower. The clap, we could turn it down. And if we want to add a little reverb. And now we can turn the tape on. So right here, you have this tape sound. You can add some tape. Hit the drive. So if I want it, I could turn the tape up like that. Now, you have lo-fi options where if you wanted to just distort it, hit that, turn it on. See? And we could go crazy. That's the flanger. Go back to the lo-fi. See right there, we can get the mix right. So that's how you use that. Now, if I want to switch, so one of the cool things I utilize with this is I'll right click, I mean, I'll click right here. I turn on pendulum. And sometimes it goes forward and sometimes it plays backwards. We'll do the same here. And you can really see it. If I was to do it with this kick, you will really notice. Let's see, now watch. So I'm not going to use that, but you can see how that works. So we just have it go forward. So that's how you use the on for drums with the with the drum sequencer. Now say let's I want to stack another one. So let's grab another one. We could drag and drop that in. Now let's use another player. If I drop a beat map in. See, so you can see the beat maps playing notes already. Now let's um, find another kick. Let's use this. So right there, this is set to be a snare, you hear it? So let's change that. See, so it says one, one goes to one, two goes to two, three goes to four, three goes to three, four goes to four. 
If I turn this knob, this will be five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So this is three is a hi hat, Sam. So we can add another hi hat. Um, let's see. Let's throw one on four. Okay, so let's say if I just like that now, I want to fix the pitch on this I hat. All right, let's just turn it down. All right. So if I want to show you something real quick, let's mute this. So this is playing from our... Turn our tape on. Okay. I don't really like that kick, but I'm going to leave it for this purpose. So let's turn our... Turn this down. Now let me show you how to work the beat map. So if I turn this, okay, you get more kicks, right? So I'm, if I want to lock that, I'm going to hit X, Y. It'll lock it on the map. I like the snare where it's at. I'm going to lock it in. Now these hi-hats, what if I want to change them? So I like that one. What if I turn it in? So that just gives you a basic idea how to do that, right? So let's turn this back. Okay. So now we got those players. Now, let's say we want to add a baseline generator. So you could get an idea how to utilize that. So let me show you. If I want to use, I'm going to use this hyper bottom bass. I really like it. We'll drop it in. We drop hyper bottom in. Now, if we go to the players, we could go to baseline generator. If you notice right here, the note changes for what I push on my keyboard. But we're going to slide this. Put this on 64 notes. that just for the purpose of what we talking okay so what if I kept that now if I hit stop and I hit play see everything's going together so let's say we just use that I don't like this one note right here I'm 
actually going to leave it though. So now, if I wanted to, let's say we want to add a piano. So let's go. You know, people talk a lot about the the reason plus. So we still going to. I love this cozy patch. That's like my favorite. Now we go to scales and chords. We could drop that in. Let's put this on a minor. I'm going to turn on open chords. And I'm going to turn it on the inversion and in color. step sequencer so let's go find us um, a perfect example would be let's see what we get with the layers I like layers a lot so we want to drop um, a poly step sequencer on top and now we're going to throw some notes on height to be two, three, let's say two. So if I want it, we can make the I could hit this button, edit, duplicate all variations. I mean, copy, duplicate to all variations. We hit two. Now we should come up. So now if I hit this. I want to use that I could just do this next and it'll just keep switching back and forth see got that let's use this dual arpeggio or dual arpeggio so let's go find us some bells plucks or mallets or something now with this it's pretty dope so what we're going to do is show you how to get this thing to play in key 
So what you do is hit the players. You grab it. You drop it in. You grab the player. You drop it in. So first thing we want to do is drop in the skills and chords. We want to go to a minor because that's what we we're in over there. But we're going to turn chords off. We're going to come back to players. The reason why we cut chords off is so it'll play one note. Now, but we want to play in key. We're going to drop dual arpeggio in there. Now, when I press one note, you can hear it. I'm going to turn it on R2. I'm going to turn my steps on. And I'm going to draw it all the way out. Now, watch. So we have that, right? So now I want to turn this on and I'm going to have this go down. Now watch. If I set it at eight bars, eight, eight steps, watch. play and turn this on okay go let's turn on a no echo now we could grab a let's just grab a guitar stop and we drop our skills and chords in now we will turn this off these tell you where the notes play where the 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 drop is going to come so i mean the next note's going to come so let's see um i want this to be at one fourth we draw the repeats out for 16 bars. See? So if we do the pitch, we could do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So if we turn off tempo sync, so let's press play now. See? 
just use that simple for the purpose. And so there we have it. And now we built the track with just players. We got the oomph player playing with the drum sequencer. We got our probability going backwards. We got our uh, uh, beat map. We got the oomph drums. We got our bass line generator playing. We have our piano playing. So you would say, well, how do we get that to the track? Okay. Well, first you would do this. So we would hit direct, direct record. You would hit your hyper bottom, select that, and press record. So we have that, that's done. Now we could bypass this because we got bass. So our bass is here, all right? So now what if we want to do the same with our piano? We would come here. You know, we don't have to do that because it's in scales and chords. But if you wanted to, you could turn on direct record and then hit the pre. And we could go like this. Oh, well, my bad. You could send it to the track. There it goes. See, so now we could bypass this. Oh, we got to get rid of our notes that we had. I believe these are our notes right here. Now, let's see. Nope. We're just going to leave it that way. Actually, let me bring my window up. Oh, it's there. So it's there. We good. So we got that on the track. All right. We could bypass. No, we got to leave it on. Hang on. Yep, so we leave that on. That's my bad. I'm tripping, guys. Don't touch my life. You could do the same with your your bells or your perk right here. See, so now it's there. So you had that done. Now you want to do variations with your drums. You can switch right here. So if you want to do just a clap. And then this changes. And that's it, guys. I hope this helped you out. I hope it showed you how to utilize these players and how you can apply them in your music production every day. 
I really like them. I use them all the time now. I've been using them and just getting more uh, uh, acclimated to how they work and the application of them for what I'm trying to do. So hopefully you guys hop into it. This is your brother, Brother OTG. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Make sure you um, check out the description. Make sure you also join my Patreon. You know, like I said, I'm building this Patreon up to add more stuff and get this thing um, built around production and, and some other stuff. So hopefully you guys found some tips. Inshallah, your family is safe. Um, it's your brother, OTG, Overtime Grind.